Okay, uh, let's go with the first song. Everybody, we're gonna sing the steadfast love of the Lord, uh, and it is if you have a songbook number 102. Mm -hmm. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, and therefore I will hope in him. Uh, Tony, I believe it's on you, bro, for the uh, second song here. Awesome. Uh, can you hear me, bro? Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to help everybody here. You can find it, bro. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, for our next song, we are going to sing uh, His Love Endures Forever. Amen. Uh, hopefully you guys can see the lyrics on your screen right now. I don't know why it wasn't working before. Can you guys still hear me? I feel like I can't hear anybody. I can hear you, bro. Okay. Okay. Uh, boom, 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 ba, ba, doom, ba, boom, boom, boom. Boom ba ba doom ba boom 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 ba ba doom ba boom 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 ba ba Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love endures forever. To him who among us does great wonder, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of God, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name, for his promises are good. You've got to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name, his love reigns forevermore. ba ba doom ba doom boom 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 ba ba doom ba boom 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 ba ba doom ba doom boom 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 ba ba doom ba doom boom 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 
to him who calls us from our sorrows. His love endures forever and freed us from our enemies. Endures forever who by his wisdom made the heavens. His love endure forever and spread the earth upon the seas ever. Give thanks to the Lord for his love and us forever. Sing praise to his name for his promises are good. You've got to give thanks to the Lord for his love and us forever. Sing praise to his name, his love reigns forevermore. Ba -ba -dum -ba -dum -boom. Boom, boom, ba, ba, doom, ba, doom, doom, boom, boom, ba, ba, doom, ba, doom, 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 boom, ba, ba, doom, ba, doom, boom, 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 ba, ba, doom, to him who calls us his disciples, love endures forever, who sent his son to die on a tree endures forever to him who came low to call us higher his love endures forever and by his truth has set us free oh you know you got to give thanks to the lord for his love endures forever Sing praise to his name, for his promises are good. You've got to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name, his love reigns forevermore. You've got to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name, for his promises are good. You've got to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name. His love reigns forevermore. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to today's Connecticut Sunday worship service. Uh, my name is Gerald, and I have the pleasure and opportunity to give the welcome this morning. Uh, let's be turning our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 17. In verse 5, it says, This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on the flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wasteland. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sets out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. So let's pause right here. So right here you have in Jeremiah, um, basically Judah ahead of time here, or if you go back a little bit, Judah is being laid out right here by the Lord uh, through Jeremiah. And one of the terms that God uses is, he says, Judah's sin is engraved with an iron tool inscribed with a flint point on the tablets of their hearts. So you could just see the darkness that Judah was in at this time. And sometimes that can be our lives, right? Um, sometimes we can have some dark times. And indeed, in each of our lives, we've had very dark moments. But the interesting thing is that God gives this warning about trusting in men. And even though he's talking to Judah, it's like a resounding gong. We can all take a lesson or a piece of advice from what God is saying here, that anyone who does trust in the strength 
their own strength or trust in the strength of a person, it's going to fail. And I don't know about you, but I know I have trusted in not only my own strength, but also in the strength of other people. And surely enough, every single time I've seen it fail, right? But then God gives the encouragement in the same warning. And he mentions in verse seven that it blesses the man who trusts in the Lord, you know, whose confidence is in him. And he'll be planted like a tree by water. How, like, imagine always being able to draw that strength from God, even in hardship, right? And that's ultimately what God wants us to do. He wants us to be able to draw that strength from him in our hardships. And I know for me this week, I needed to take a great lesson from that second half right there. Just being able to draw my strength from God um, in my hardships. And maybe there are other people who've had hard weeks this week or who've had great weeks, right? Ultimately, we're here this morning because, you know, if you had a bad week and if you had a bad time with trying to trust in God's strength, but instead you trusted in your own and things didn't pan out the way you wanted it to, well, you have a second chance this morning. You know, we're all here at Sunday service able to draw from God's strength and learn how to do that today. So if you're here to draw from God's strength, right, to be like a tree planted by the stream, to be like the person who understands that his heart, his or her heart is deceitful above all things and wants God to search that heart, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Connecticut region of the New York City International Christian Church Sunday worship service. Am I also praying, John? Uh, you see, there we go. Well, let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, thank you so much for uh, just really being able to, to be the one that can set our hearts, God, to help us to see the very things that need refinement in our lives, God. God, I just thank you for um, just really uh, entrusting your word to us, God, that we can um, really be able to uh, take it, apply it to our lives, and then help others to see the value and the truth in your word, Father. God, I pray for t everything in today's service, God, that you would just be with every aspect of the service, God. Be with the singing. Be with the praise of your holy name, Father. Be with the communion, the contribution, God. Help us to uh, just really learn how to uh, come before you, before the cross, God, to, to give back to you, Father, and to be able to hear the powerful sermon preached today, Father, and be refined in our souls, Father. God, we just thank you for your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, amen. Thank you so much, bro. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, so a couple quick announcements here. Uh, it's good to be home. Uh, just obviously just flew back in from uh, Arizona last night. Uh, so definitely good to be back. Um, so really quick here, uh, this uh, Wednesday uh, will be Men's Midweek. Uh, prayerfully, we'll have a, a guest speaker, which will be awesome. Uh, so for all the fellas, you guys should have the link. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll resend it in our brother's chat. Uh, so you can send it out to your your, your friends. I, I believe we might be uh, New York. I believe wants to join us because I told them who might be speaking, and so you know they want to they want some of the party, you know. So uh, so it's going to be awesome. So definitely uh, uh, be looking forward to that. Uh, this next Sunday is uh, November fifteenth, and so we should be having a a congregational uh, Sunday service. Uh, with New York, uh, New Jersey, I believe Syracuse and some of Boston will be joining us. Um, and I believe that's also going to be the send off service for Philadelphia. I'm not 100% sure. I, I forget. Uh, Tony, do you remember, bro? Is, is that what Luke said at SAF? I don't remember. I believe so. Yeah, I, I believe so too. I'm about 99.99999% sure uh, that that it's this Sunday. Uh, so definitely, I think it'll, it'll be awesome. Uh, and I believe, and I'll keep this in mind. We normally start now at 11. I'm pretty sure also church will be at 10. Um, you know, and it, I believe it's going to be pre-recorded on YouTube. So it won't be a, a Zoom meeting where we all come together. Uh, we'll just watch it live um, on YouTube at 10 a.m. So I'll send out that link. Uh, once I have it, I think it's going to to be awesome as well. So we could possibly do like a little watch party if you guys want. Um, and the following Sunday, we'll go back to uh, Connecticut Regional Services at 11, um, which will be the 22nd. 
Um, so which will be uh, a lot of fun. Now, previously, I talked about how we may be doing a Saturday service that week. Uh, we'll find we're going to do a regular Sunday service uh, on that Sunday, the 22nd. So don't worry about any Saturday or late Sunday service. Uh, it'll be Saturday, uh, Sunday at 11 a.m. Um, so definitely uh, be here. and It'll be uh, awesome. Uh, today, we're going to do something a little bit different uh, because we have we're going to be watching the Good News Network. Uh, it's about 25 minutes long, this new good news thing. Uh, my sermon is only going to be about 10 to 15 minutes long, just a couple quick points. Um, and then it's that way we're not here, you know, for a long time. And then leaders will be at 1230 again. So uh, definitely everyone, please, uh, whoever wants to join will be at leaders. Uh, and I think it'll be uh, a lot of fun. Uh, amen. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into the uh, next song here. Awesome. Uh, if you can see on your screen, we'll be singing song 378, uh, We Will Glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Amen. Well, good morning, church. My name is Jesus, and this is the part of the service where we think about uh, communion, which is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. If you have a Bible, please turn to Matthew chapter 26, and we're going to read starting at verse 53. And to give a little bit of context before we read this scripture, Jesus uh, here uh, is about to be arrested by one of his uh, friends, Judas, uh, and we pick up here in verse 53 in Matthew chapter 26, it says, do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. To give a little bit of background of who I am as a person, I grew up as someone who is very rational 
and someone who relied on his mind a lot, his intellect. Uh, I believe personally that you can achieve any goal you want in life if you work hard enough. Uh, I received fulfillment, personal fulfillment in achieving goals in my life. If something bad happens to you, I believe that it's, it's your fault. Uh, in other words, basically, I, I loved and adored self-control. January of this year, I, I moved to Connecticut with that similar mindset. And afterwards, what took place for me was the most difficult year I've ever had spiritually in my life so far. Just to give a little bit of background of what I was dealing with uh, during this year, um, I was having relationship problems. All my friends uh, were in New York, so I didn't really have many friends here. Uh, COVID-19 came, so I couldn't do the things I enjoyed doing, which was hanging out with my friends, going to the movies, going to the gym. Uh, I had car problems. As many of you guys know, I, uh, I put diesel in my car. Note to self, don't, don't put diesel in your car. Uh, problems with, with old roommates. Uh, till this day, I still don't know why one of my old roommates doesn't like me. I'm not sure why, but that's just something that I just had to deal with. Uh, house problems. I told you guys the story of how my roof uh, just fell down from my house. Uh, financial problems. There was times in which I had to pay uh, extra furniture, pay for extra rent. Um, and I had to do all of this all while uh, taking, uh, you know, responsibility in the church that at times I didn't even want to do. I didn't even want to make take. Um, through all the, the problems that I had uh, this year, I tried my best to control them and to solve it. But there was this case in which I couldn't control that situation. And so what did I do? Well, I started to blame other people. I started to uh, not only blame other people, but be, be very condemnatory uh, towards other people. After all, um, this is what I said. It, it can't be my fault that this stuff is happening to me. I'm doing everything, quote unquote, right. I'm doing everything that I can. I'm fully outpouring myself. And it can't be God's fault, right? Because God is, is perfect. So I reached a really bad state in my life where I was uh, super judgmental, bitter, resentful, uh, and depressed. And besides maybe one or like two people, I didn't really think anyone cared about you know me or my my spirituality. Um, and there was times in which I was thinking of leaving God because the pain just came to severe. But then what really helped me uh, change my perspective and to really, it was uh, to think about Jesus on the cross and think about the, the scripture I just read. Uh, from what we just read, Jesus had the control to stop the unjust suffering that he was going through. And unlike me, he was 100% innocent, right? They didn't do anything wrong. Yet he allowed himself to feel betrayed by all his friends, and he allowed himself to be wrongfully punished for the fulfillment of other people. He died not only for you know, God's glory, but he also died for us. He, he died for me to receive eternal life. So th there was a couple of things I, I learned over the, the past few months, but I think I learned three, three points. Number one, uh, I shouldn't expect God to take away my suffering and my discipline just because I did, quote unquote, everything right. Jesus did everything right, and he still suffered for me. He still suffered for us. Number two, sometimes suffering is needed for the sake of helping other people get fulfilled. And I think that's part of what it means to carry each other's burdens.
And then number three, I can't fully rationalize my relationship with God because the foundation of my relationship with God was built on an irrational principle, which is Jesus died for me, right? That whole idea of Jesus dying for me doesn't make any rational sense. So why am I trying to rationalize my relationship with God? When I think about the cross, I remember that Jesus died for me and died for my fulfillment. To have the opportunity to have my sins forgiven, to be a part of the church and to be blessed. Fulfillment for me should not come from doing the right thing, but it comes from honoring and remembering the cross. The cross to me right now means uh, fulfillment. Thank you for letting me share. And let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, uh, I'm just really grateful to be a part of a worldwide church that, that focuses uh, not only on building up your kingdom, God, but building up other people, Father God. Uh, I pray, God, as we, we take the bread that represents the body of Christ and uh, the juice that represents the blood of Christ, that we can uh, really examine our own hearts and our own lives and really take the opportunity to understand, God, that that you uh, died unjustly uh, and unfairly, Father God, yet you, you did it because uh, you love us. And so uh, I pray, God, that, that we can really reflect on the love of God and the love of Christ uh, at this time. Uh, in Jesus' name, I pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jesus, for that awesome uh, communion. Uh, but at this time, we're going to have a special performance done in spoken word by our amazing sister, Akuya Bansu. Thank you. Hosanna. When I woke up this morning, God, God was still God. Immovable, my maker, my mainstay, my bond marvelous in might, magnificent as he was, scarred, marred for me. Though he has already paid the price of my sin, though he has already done away with what I've deserved in death, though he's already braved, bruised backbone and brine, I have refused to stow everything I've owned on sinking ship. I have not set my plow alight. I have not burnt my bridges. If I were being honest, I'd say I stay headlong in the wine of grace and papyrus. I shriek, submerged in a baptism by fire. I'd be afternoonish in the midst of the blistering bleeding of bane. Oh, so cold. But here I come repentant amidst Nile Reed, a broken confession in a back room, a praise song and out of tune, a holy nation in a spiritual war, a treasured possession in a hidden field. I am a lamp unto my brother's feet. I am sun and sky and scythe. I am daughter of the most high, set atop a kingdom that has filled the earth, home in the church pew on the street corner, in the byways, I bring good news to parched throats calling out Hosanna to the cosmos, the oblivion, the bliss, all under a celestial vault. All you who return to the earth as bone, as dust, and as mist, glory, my loves. When we woke up this morning, God was still God. And what a privilege it is to be his. That is to say, haven housed, hilltop held, heaven bound, and glorious. Thank you. That's awesome, Akuya. Thank you for sharing. Jonah took the spotlight for a second there. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, but hey, everyone, uh, my name is Danny. Uh, I will. Uh, be uh, given the contribution message and thank you for allowing me to share. Uh, for those visiting us today, 
Uh, don't feel pressured to give, uh, but you're more than welcome. You, if you see who we are, you see what we do, uh, there's going to be, someone's going to put a, a link on the chat that you could donate. But uh, yeah, so I will be sharing. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay, so for, for a while, I in the beginning, when I, when I became a disciple, I didn't really like reading the Old Testament because I, I didn't understand it. Uh, but more and more than I read it, I understand that it's the uh christian walk you know like it's like literally they're what they're going through in person is what we go through spiritually and and a lot of things right and uh, i see that um especially also like when it comes to giving uh so i want to share a scripture for you guys it's in exodus 25. so the israelites did a lot of crazy things they messed up so many times but other times they got it right so this is one of those times. Exodus 25, verse 1 and 2. All right, and it reads, The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose hearts prompt them to give. And then it goes to all the offerings he prompts them to give. Now let's go to uh, chapter 36. Uh, verse two to five. Now this is the people, right? It says, Then Moses summoned Vesela and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring fruitful offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work for the Lord commanded to be done. You know, this uh, really challenges my heart, especially at the time of missions, because this is the kind of heart we must have, you know? Um, and something that I realized is that the people, they didn't see like the, the sacrifice or they didn't see like, like a struggle. Because that's what I, that's what I, honestly, that's what I feel every, <laughs> every time we get a mission. So I'm like, ah, I got to work harder. You know, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to take time. But I realized what they focus was the miracles. You know, they focus that, man, like God is doing something amazing here. And I mean, just being here in Connecticut, you know, just seeing Matt with us right there. <laughs> just, uh, just seeing his transformation, seeing his heart, you know, just, um, yeah, just being in this family, I, I think. Uh, or, or focus should be that, you know, look at the miracles and um, and just with that state of heart, just be like, all right, you know, what is the, the call for missions and, um, and yeah, just give it. Um, and yeah, uh, so I wanna encourage you with that, uh, with uh, the heart to give. And uh, yeah, so let's just go to God in prayer and uh, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. Uh, you are so good to us. And uh, I just pray for, uh, as we give, that uh, we give cheerfully, and uh, also that uh, we understand, Father, that you're just doing incredible things here in Connecticut and just all over the world. I know really soon we're going to see a good new segment of what's going on around the world, and I hope that it builds, it builds our faith. I hope that uh, we just encourage and just see the miracles that you're doing, not just for us here, but all over the world, and uh, we're super grateful to be in your kingdom, and just, um, yeah, we're grateful. Thank you, Father. All these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we give, we're going to sing Thank You, Lord, it's, uh, number 700, if you have a songbook. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song and praise him all day long. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will to me so I can serve for eternity. 
Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys uh, so much. So at this time, what we're going to do is jump into the Good News uh, Network, uh, episode three. Um, now, I'm going to share my screen, but it's going to be choppy. There's just no way around it. Um, uh, even though I have, you know, good internet, it's still going to be choppy. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to send the link, just put the YouTube link here uh, in the chat. And so I'll share my screen still, but if you want to watch it on a different device or whatever, or just kind of, you know, turn your cameras off while you watch it, feel free. You'll get a better quality if you watch it on your own thing. Um, and then we'll probably, we'll, we'll come back once it's over. So we'll give it maybe about, it's about 25 minutes long. So we'll give it about 27, 28 to have everyone back. And you'll see mine end on my screen once it's, uh, once it's done. So uh, you guys go ahead and start watching that now. I'll share my screen here. Hello and welcome to the third edition of GNN, our global good news network, where you'll find the latest news of how God is working throughout our movement of churches. My name is Luke Speckman and with me is my beautiful bride, Brandon Speckman, reporting to you from New York City. Last month was absolutely amazing. I'm so excited to reflect on October's miracles, all that God has done in our churches and the unity he's brought to the family of believers. And in this month's edition, We'll give you the latest updates on the Rocktober campaign. We'll highlight our newest church plantings. We'll see a day in the life of disciples in India, and we'll show you the impact of the Crown of Thorns project across the nations and so much more. Let's get started. God is moving powerfully in Bujambura, Burundi, and specifically in the way he's using Satan's schemes for what we know will be a glorious victory. Just last week, we received word that several brothers in the church were illegally imprisoned for preaching the gospel. Apparently, a persecutor bribed police officers to arrest three of the leaders in the Bujambura, Burundi church, even though Amadou, a preacher from Abidjan, had preached the word at the vice president's home this past January. Despite the setback, we have great news that not only have the brothers been released unharmed, but the church just celebrated the Bujambura ICC inaugural service on November 1st with 244 souls in attendance. And if that's not enough, there were 40 baptisms in one day. This miracle took place at Bujambura's Lake Tanganyika on October 30th, bringing Rocktober to an epic close. So far, we have 10 churches and remnant groups in six of the 29 nations of French-speaking Africa, giving us a total of 1,141 disciples in those nations. The distinction between a church and a remnant group has to do with leadership. A church will be planted and led by a trained evangelist, while a remnant group is led by someone who has valiantly stepped out on faith to start a group, even though we don't yet have the resources to send the planting to that city. With disciples in French-speaking nations of Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, Republic of Benin, Cameroon, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Republic of Burundi, your prayers are needed all the more as they fight to win souls for God. These are the people who will raise up the next generation of evangelists and women's ministry leaders, the very leaders that will take charge of the remaining 23 French-speaking African nations. To God be all the glory.
so amazing. Now, the South Asian Disciples participated in the first ever virtual South Asia Missions Conference led by Raja and Debs Rajan. The conference was entitled Mission Possible, which took place on October 9th through the 11th. The Saturday session was broadcasted in two local languages. Although Hindi is the most widely spoken language, India has over 20 official languages and more than 19,000 dialects. The Hindi session drew a crowd of disciples from Nepal and Northern India, while the Tamil session was for disciples from the Southern part of India. The welcome from the Hindi session was done by Siraj and Anu from Orissa, located the Southeastern coastal India. They have now come to New Delhi for training. On Sunday, we saw the appointment of two evangelists and two women's ministry leaders, Tom Mill and Jay Shuri Selvan, the leaders of the Bangalore Church, along with Deepak and Mani Singh, the leaders of the South Region of New Delhi Church. Congratulations to you all. We know you will preach the word. Also on Sunday, Raja preached a powerful message entitled Mission Possible. Let's take a look at a short clip from his sermon. Let me tell you something, there is much work to be done here in our South Asian countries. I mean, we have, we have Afghanistan to be taken care of. We need to send a mission team out there. We have Bangladesh, we have Sri Lanka, we have Bhutan, we have Pakistan, and we have much of India. There's a lot to do. Are you with me? So don't think that, oh, why was I not selected for the mission team? Well, there's a lot of places to go. We have 1.8 billion souls under us a big responsibility that god has put in our hearts 1.8 billion people and we got to feel the burden if you're really praying and if you're really begging god then the next step is move on you got to go well where is bombay going i want to be in the bombay mission team tell me bro bro when is hyderabad going i want to be there bro when is colombo sri lanka going I want to be there. I want to be there in the mission team. I want to be there to go to Kashmir or maybe Kerala, maybe Maharashtra, maybe Meghalaya, maybe Himachal Pradesh, maybe Arunachal Pradesh, maybe Madhya Pradesh, maybe Uttar Pradesh, maybe Gujarat, maybe Uttarakhand, maybe Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh. How about Andhra Pradesh? How about Assam? How about Bihar? How about Haryana? How about Jharkhand and how about Karnataka? How about Mizoram? How about Orissa? How about Nagaland and how about Punjab? How about Tripura, Tamil Nadu, Manipur, West Bengal, Telgana, Sikkim? How about those places? There's much work to be done. We got to have it in our hearts. God, please, I want to go to one of these places and go help people to go to you. Our dear brother Raja is on fire. At the conclusion of the Sunday service, the Kolkata mission team led by John and Salma were sent out. All of the disciples were fired up. Now, since none of the mission team members speak the local language of Kolkata, they are all going to be taking Bengali lessons so that they can be effective. Their Nago service will be in two weeks on November 22nd. Now, the total population of South Asia is 1.8 billion lost souls. This includes about 1 billion Hindus and almost 600 million Muslims. Currently in India, there are 28 states and eight union territories. Our goal is to be in all 36. The plan to make this happen is Operation Tiger, which is similar to our Operation Eagle in the USA. It is so inspiring to see the work of the Lord as the South Asian churches are now at 468 disciples strong with ministries in Kathmandu, Chennai, Bangalore, New Delhi, and now Kolkata. Please keep the Bujambura and Calcutta mission teams in your prayers. It's so amazing to be a part of a worldwide movement that believes in fulfilling the Great Commission. The pandemic has opened up many new opportunities because of our virtual presence, especially for our friends and family who are in other cities. Because we're a unified movement who teaches the same thing everywhere and every church, we are able to connect them with our sister churches in their local area. For example, our very own Raul Moreno in Brazil was able to connect his cousin Juan Carlos Perez to the disciples in Miami, and Juan Carlos was baptized on September 30th. As you all may know, during the pandemic, so many were baptized into Christ because they were referred by someone in a different church to your church. This is our worldwide family, and it's only in the kingdom that you have disciples willing to learn new languages. 
go anywhere, do anything, and give up everything in the hopes of saving just one more. Bujumbura and Calcutta represent just the last two international church plantings of 2020. We want to thank all the disciples around the world who sacrificed financially to special missions to make this possible, and the many who have answered the call to be on these mission teams. You are ambassadors for Christ and are inspiring so many with the true cost of discipleship. Now the Chennai India church leaders, Pratap and Maggie, are going to take us through a day in the life of two of their precious disciples in their church. Hi bro. Hi bro. Hi bro. Morning. 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 Come on. Come on. Revati has already made uh, some tea and yes. coffee for us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so she's uh, she's giving. Of course, uh, Ramkumar, Revati, they're known for their giving, so they don't hold back anything. So bro, any time you give, anything. Four thirty. Four thirty come. Four thirty. Okay, so you shall have, you shall have in a time in the beginning. For that little five o'clock, we have been doing prayer, our Bible study. Most of the six o'clock, we have our job done. Seven o'clock, we have our six o'clock, we have our breakfast done. Now six thirty, we have our study. All seven o'clock, we have our study. Seven o'clock, we have our study. Seven o'clock, seven o'clock, we have our study. Seven o'clock, seven o'clock, we have our study. Half hour travel, we have six thirty, we have our study. Okay, so this is their living room. And uh, <clears throat> okay, so this is their uh, toilet, bathroom. Okay, there is a bathroom. And here comes the kitchen. Morning Papa, I did the lockdown, the soup, the the So, the Garden is the garden. 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 The garden is the Okay, here we go. Photos of the the of the Daddy, I'm coming to the house. Hey, I'm going to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to Two 
இருபது வருஷம் முடிஞ்சு செடி எதாவது இருக்கும் அதெல்லாம் முடிஞ்சுதான் ஃபாலோ அப்லாம் பண்ணிட்டு அதுக்கப்புறம் வீட்டில் வந்து நம்ம டிஃபன் சாப்பிட்டு அதுக்கப்புறம் பசங்க கூட கொஞ்சம் டைம் ஸ்பெண்ட் பண்ணிட்டு அவங்கள அவங்க அவங்களோட படிப்பு பற்றி கேட்பேன் என்ன படிச்சுருக்காங்க ஏதாவது பகலில் என்ன பண்ணீங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லி அவங்க கூட கொஞ்சம் டைம் ஸ்பெண்ட் பண்ணிட்டு அதுக்கப்புறம் நானும் ரேவதி அவன் நைட்டு நல்லா சாப்பிட்டு ப்ரே பண்ணுவேன் is really a fire of man for god and so he is his wife revati ramkumar thank you wow how inspiring to see the level of courage and trust our brothers and sisters have in india i totally agree at this time we will have a brief commercial break After that, we'll head down to Miami, Florida to hear the good news reported by Matt and Helen Sullivan about the TNT inaugural service. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Romans 15 verse 4. The Untold Story, Chronicles of Modern Day Christianity by Ron Harding is a must read for every disciple. It is an inspiring historical account of how God has advanced his kingdom through Christian movements in our recent history, including the Restoration Movement, the Crossroads Movement, the Boston Movement, as well as God's new movement. It also details the heart-wrenching attacks of Satan on God's people and how God has used them to continue to refine and mature us as his movement in this generation. Those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. Edmund Burke, get your copy today. The Untold Story, Chronicles of Modern Day Christianity is available for purchase in full color or black and white on Amazon. Hello and greetings from the Sages World Sector. I'm Matt Sullivan and this is my beautiful wife Helen reporting from Miami, Florida. We bring you an exciting report of the TNT inaugural service and more. As most of you know, Dr. Joe and Edie Garman of Thomasville joined God's modern day movement with their church of 18 disciples just this past August. Then we sent a team of campus students led powerfully by Isaac and Deborah Gonzalez to create the Thomasville and Tallahassee ICC, also known as the Dynamite TNT International Christian Church. October has officially marked the beginning of the church's highly anticipated inaugural service on Sunday, October the 4th. It was an incredible weekend with 151 people in attendance in person and 630 viewers in attendance online. Doctors Kip and Elena McKean joyfully welcomed everyone Zoom style, sharing good news from the churches around the world. Disciples from all over the country came together for this momentous occasion. Several disciples flew in to attend the service and brought their family and friends with them. It was an inspiring show of God's spirit. The inaugural service was the perfect start to rock October for the rest of the month. And that is exactly what happened. On the last Sunday of the month, October 25th, Matt preached a fitting lesson entitled Feed My Sheep, where he addressed the older disciples by challenging them on their maturity. Referencing the Luke 8 passage on the parable of the sower, Matt taught that just as the Bible teaches that once saved always saved is false doctrine, also once mature always mature is false doctrine. Also the Garmin family had a personal victory. Tyler, Dr. Joe and Edie's grandson, was baptized into Christ. Tyler's addition to the kingdom is a dream come true for the Garmins. Another incredible addition was that of Eddie Arantes, who is restored to the Lord after becoming lukewarm over time. Spurred on by three years of persistence from our bold parish church leader, Anthony Olmos, Eddie made the courageous decision to live out God's purpose for his life again. Eddie's restoration is the official start of the Auburn, Alabama Remnant Group. With Eddie being employed at Auburn University, home of the War Eagles, it is clear to see that the Holy Spirit is making way for us to soar on wings like eagles in the mighty South. Eddie was also the team leader of both our faithful Dubai mission team leader, April Baker, and current Dubai church women's ministry leader, Sadvi Mendez. This man has had such an obvious impact in God's kingdom. And what a show of God's love to see that impact coming full circle. 
This is Matt and Helen Sullivan signing off from Miami, Florida. Now let's take a quick look at how the church continues to forcefully advance around the world. God's movement is not only making its way across the United States, but to all nations. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Jesus says to make disciples of all nations. And here in God's modern day movement, disciples are doing just that through our Operation Eagle and Crown of Thorns projects. Acts chapter one, verse eight reads, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This scripture lays the foundation of both of these missions and serves as the inspiration of our kingdom work. Operation Eagle is our plan to evangelize the United States by the year 2026, while the Crown of Thorns project is our vision to evangelize the world and plant churches in every nation, beginning with the most influential cities. Future U.S. plantings include Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Michigan, Idaho, Alabama, and Missouri, each to be planted in 2021. Nations slated to have a sold-out movement church in 2021 include Bahrain, Sri Lanka, Scotland, and Portugal. It is absolutely by the grace of God that despite the pandemic, the millions of travesties, and the many adjustments due to COVID-19, the kingdom of God is still forcefully advancing with godly men and women continuing to take a hold of it. Please keep each of these plantings, their leaders and their missionaries in your prayers as we continue to win the world for God's glory. This month's campaign entitled Rocktober has been more than successful as God has surely heard the prayers and seen the hard work of the believers. Let's take a look at some of the churches that have led the way in exponential growth. Before the planting of Calcutta, the four churches of South Asia, Bangalore, Chennai, New Delhi, and Kathmandu had a collective goal of 52 baptisms in 52 days. God blew out their goal and gave them 54 baptisms in 52 days. And in Manila, Philippines, they grew by 28 in the month of October. And a special shout out to the teen ministry, which has now reached a staggering 93 disciples, the largest in the movement. Way to go teens. The disciples in Africa have been on fire since the arrival of Blaise and Patricia Fumba in September. The church in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, led by the Fumbas, will serve as the pillar church for all French-speaking Africa. And with a church staff of 33, including those that are paid, unpaid, full-time and part-time, campus and mercy, God is reinforcing the incredible partnership between Abidjan and our sister church in Kinshasa. Together, may they win all of French-speaking Africa for the Lord. However, winning nations is never without a fight. Due to COVID-19, strict travel restrictions are in place, and one must travel through four countries in order to enter Bujumbura, Burundi, where the newest mission team just arrived. As previously mentioned, the three brothers in Bujumbura were illegally put in jail. But as you can see, the brothers are imitating Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, where they prayed and sang hymns to God. Please be keeping these valiant disciples in your prayers. Over in the States, the Sages Metro Miami Church in Florida had 44 baptisms over the past two months, bringing the church to over 200 disciples strong. What a way to rock October. In the Southeast USA, the TNT Church originally began as the Thomasville Church with 18 disciples on August 23rd. Now, with the recent mission team from Miami led by TNT campus leaders Isaac and Deborah Gonzalez, they have had several baptisms and restorations. The church has now more than doubled, totaling 43 disciples in just 10 weeks. 
From Southeast to the Southwest, the growth has been astounding. In July, a supplemental mission team led by Corey and G. Blackwell was sent to San Diego, California. Since then, they've grown from 14 to 52 disciples, nearly quadrupling in size. In the Northeast, the Boston Church, led by Mike and Chanel Patterson, began the year with 53 disciples. As of this week, they have exactly doubled in size to 106. Great job, Boston. And finally, we want to highlight the trailblazing church in Chicago. On January 1st of this year, the church began the 131 disciples. A supplemental mission team led by John and Emma Kazi arrived on January 5th. After nearly 100 baptisms and 16 restorations, the church has more than doubled to 263 sold out disciples. Also on January 1st, the campus ministry had one disciple on one campus, and now they have 50 disciples on 11 campuses, and many of those are student athletes. Way to go, Chicago! How faith building it is to see God working so powerfully among the nations. What a month! October was truly Rocktober with God boldly establishing his kingdom on the rock, Jesus. The Bujumbura planting in Burundi, Africa, as well as the Calcutta planting in India is only a fragment of God's global vision. Not to mention the work in the U.S. with the TNT inaugural service sparking the Auburn, Alabama remnant group with our dear brother Eddie's restoration. We are truly seeing God bless the deeds of our faith as a movement with the Crown of Thorns Project and Operation Eagle. Let's not forget Ron Harding's latest book, The Untold Story, Chronicles of Modern Day Christianity, now available on Amazon. It really has been a momentous month with incredible growth in our churches all across the nations. The month of October has truly rocked. Please be sure to subscribe to the GNN YouTube channel and tap on the bell icon to receive notifications of our latest episodes. Until next month, this is Luke and Brandon Speckman signing off for GNN. The best news you'll ever hear. Okay, awesome. We'll have we'll wait for everyone to come back uh, while we sing uh, the next song here. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, like Jonathan said, we're gonna sing one more song before he comes to preach a very quick but valuable lesson from God. All right. Uh, so as you're making your way back, let's sing "Walk On, Walk On."
money walk on. Walk on, walk on. Walk in the life that takes you home. Walk in the life that takes you home. Up in the morning and all day. Up in the morning and all day. You gotta live the righteous way. You gotta live the righteous way. You gotta go out and earn your dime. You gotta go out and earn your dime. Not before your quiet time. But not before your quiet time. You gotta go out and say the law. You gotta go out and say the law. And preach the word at any cost. And preach the word at any cost. Sharing your faith out every day. Sharing your faith out every day. That Jesus washed your sins away. So walk on, walk on, walk on, walk on. Walk in the light that takes you home. Walk in the light that takes you home. Walk on and walk on, walk on, walk on. Walk in the light that takes you home. 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 And no confusion, no debate. There's no confusion, no debate. You gotta walk through. Heavenly you gotta walk through the heavenly gate. Although you may be criticized, and though you may be criticized, confess, repent, and be baptized. Confess, repent, and be baptized. Now you know just why we came. Now you know just why we came. To preach the word in Jesus' name. To preach the word in Jesus' name. Yeah, so heaven could hold a place for you. So heaven will hold a place for you. For you and you and you and you. For you and you and you and you. That takes you yeah, walk on and walk on. Walk on, walk on. Walk in the light that takes you home. Walk in the light that takes you home. Yeah, walk on, walk on. Walk on, walk on. Walk in the light that takes you home. Walk in the light that takes you home. Yeah, walk on and walk on. Walk on, walk on. Walk in the light that takes you home. 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 Shine in the light that takes you home. Shine in the light that takes you home. Live in the light that takes you home. Live in the light that takes you home. Walk in the light that takes you. Walk in the light that takes you home. Uh, amen. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Tony. Uh, that was uh, awesome. I uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, for sharing the communion contra, the welcome. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's turn our Bibles to Mark chapter one, and we'll dive right in. Like I said, hopefully this will be a, a 10, 15 minute uh, lesson, uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll get about our days here. Uh, Mark chapter one. Uh, let's pick it up in verse 16, a scripture that you're all uh, very familiar with here. It says, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Uh, in verse 19, when he had gone a little far farther, he saw James son of Zebedee and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. You know, this right here is a very uh, pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry. Why? Because this is the calling, of course, of the first disciples to get the church started here, for Jesus to start his ministry, and for him to eventually, three years later, die on the cross for all of us. Now, uh, of course, we I, I'm sure a lot of you have been focused on the election focused on who's going to be the next president. I'm sure you've gone on social media. You've seen people post a bunch of weird, awesome, some awesome stuff, some weird stuff, some dumb stuff, some, some just outlandish stuff, some stuff that you probably even agree with, but maybe not willing to admit. Now, what's awesome here is understanding this, is when Jesus came on earth, he came to give disciples a true purpose, to give people, to give mankind, to give all of us a true purpose. And I want to tell you this morning, no matter who the president is, your purpose does not change. No matter who the president isn't, your purpose does not change. We are soldiers, followers of Jesus Christ, no matter who the president is, amen? So no matter what you're feeling this morning, 
take comfort that you have a true king who is victorious and in heaven. Amen. The title of my lesson is A Bigger Purpose. Look in Daniel chapter 12. Uh, it was interesting. I, I was in Arizona and uh, Arizona has gone Republican for the past 24 years and it went Democrat, uh, which was pretty crazy. I wasn't expecting that. And when I was driving around uh, the city, I haven't lived there in about five, a little almost five years now was the last time I lived in uh, in Arizona. And so I was driving around and everything had changed. Like it's just a completely different city in Phoenix. Uh, the, the freeways are updated. Like everything has evolved. It's just become a very uh, thriving city, uh, even more than I, I've ever seen. And when I was driving around, I noticed that they were building there were so many new apartment complexes. I'm talking like 10 to 15 giant apartment complexes from Goodyear, which is a little bit more west, all the way to Tempe, the places that we used to roam. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And so you see that that most likely is the reason why it went. And Californians are like, hey, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to the desert. Uh, and they've all become a uh, Democrat. Now, I'm not here to tell you what, uh, you know, I believe politically because I personally uh, only care about my Bible right now. Uh, and so we're going to talk about the Bible, amen, a bigger purpose. It doesn't matter who you voted for. It doesn't matter if your president won or your president lost. It does not matter. We are not united together this morning by the president. We are united by Jesus Christ. And that's way thicker than who the president is. And in eight years, you'll have a different one. Maybe four. You never know. Jesus will say the same in eight years. Amen. Daniel chapter 12. Let's look in verse one. It says, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people will arise. There will be a time of distress that does not happen from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, this is a very powerful scripture. Point number one is shine like stars. Shine like stars. Now, I love this scripture because it says those who are wise will shine like the brightness of heavens. Now, if you look at that translation there, uh, for the wise, it's those who impart wisdom as your footnote, or it says who understand what is happening, right? Who understand, who teach it, who instruct it, right? We're talking about God. We're talking about everlasting life. If you understand that, right, you are wise. You have to know what's going on. You have to impart that wisdom on others. And then it says those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. Now you will shine like a star by leading people to righteousness. Now, not a star that you see here on earth. I'm not talking about Will Smith. I'm not talking about The Rock. I'm not talking about Brad Pitt. I'm talking about you're going to shine like a star in God's eyes. God will see you as a star. Now, that's very, that's very encouraging, amen? Imagine God's like, you know what? That's a star in, in, on earth. That's how God sees you. That is very powerful. Now, it says those who lead many to righteousness. You see, in order to be a God, uh, be a star in God's eyes, you have to lead many to righteousness. You have to help people find God. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the Good News Network. There was so much good news happening. And you see how so many people have, churches have doubled. Churches have, uh, even uh, in India, and they're talking about the, the, uh, the wife who she, she cooks, she cleans, take care of the kids. And that night, she makes it a, a, a thing to go share with at least one new woman every night, minimum. Now, here's the thing. I, by looking at her, she's older than all of us here in Connecticut. And she's like, hey, I'm going to go out there and do it. I'm going to, one, once a day, at least one new woman a day in a third world country. And you saw her living conditions. They didn't look sad. They didn't look miserable. They didn't look distressed. She looked happy. 
And she talked about how she realized she was lazy when she became a disciple and how she, they get up at 4.30 and sit at 4.30 and 5 and have their one and a half hour quiet time, one hour quiet time before he goes to work. I was convicted watching that. That's crazy. You know how many excuses I have because I have two kids running around here? And they got like three kids running around. And they were taking care of their mom, their older mom that was in the other bedroom, if you saw it. It was very convicting. What do you do in the morning? I had to ask myself that question, like, what am I doing in the morning? What am I doing every single day to push God's word? It was it was very convicting. Now, it, it's one of those things where, where we have to focus and understand that what's important is for us to lead many people to righteousness. Why? Because we have, people are going to wake up in two different ways at the end times, everlasting life or everlasting contempt. Which one do you want to wake up in? Everlasting life or everlasting contempt? You know, it was, uh, I was looking at all these churches that were doubling. Why not Connecticut? Why can't we be the ones that on this good news network and say, hey, you know, they were at 20. Now they're at 40. Do you believe that that's possible? Do you believe it? You see, you in order for that to happen, every single disciple in Connecticut, you have to believe it. But you also have to want it. You also have to go after it. It doesn't take you working uh, five hours sharing your faith. It takes you having the faith and just doing something every single day. One thing. I believe that if every disciple in Connecticut had that drive, we would double. But it's going to take everyone. If two people sit out, it does, it's not going to happen. If one person sits out, it's not going to happen. It's going to take everyone to have a focus and a faith that we are going to double. And I believe you can do it in a few months. It's not going to take a year. You could to We can totally do it in a few months. It just takes faith. It takes faith. And it takes work. But the ones who are going to do that, the ones who want to do it, those are the ones that's going to shine like stars. Not in my eyes, but in God's eyes. Do you want to shine like a star in God's eyes? Or do you just want to retreat in your own little corner? What do you want to do? Let's look in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. You know, maybe you're here and you're trying to decide, uh, well, I'm still trying to figure out if I want to be a disciple. The answer is very simple. Do you want to wake up to everlasting life or everlasting contempt? It doesn't take much to make a decision to be a disciple. It doesn't take much. I think we, we overthink things a lot when it comes to doing things, but it doesn't take much. It's simply, do I want to follow Jesus or not? Hey Amen. There's some stuff you got to work through in your heart. And we got to go through, however, do you want to wake up to everlasting life or everlasting contempt where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth? Or do you want to wake up to peace, joy, and happiness? I don't know about you. You ever heard that term? Uh, you're, you're grumpy in the morning and it's like, oh, you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Right. And someone's like, oh, it, you woke up, you're grumpy today. What side of the bed did you wake up on? Well, that, that's kind of a lot like Christianity. Do you want to wake up on the wrong side of the bed or the right side of the bed? You just got to choose which one you want to wake up on. Luke chapter 10, in verse 25, this is a, this is a great parable here. Of course, uh, Jesus uh, is telling this parable. Look at verse 25, it says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You answer, you have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, well, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite... When he came to the, to the place and saw him pass by on the other side, but a Samaritan, as he traveled, uh, came 
uh, where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two uh, denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him, Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Now, this is very powerful. This good Samaritan, right? Which is what we talk, which is where the term comes from. You know, now here's the here's the reality. It's easier to look the other way. It's easier to do nothing. It's easier to say, you know what? I don't want to do this. Helping you is work. Well, in reality, yes. Helping someone, serving someone is work. Do you think this man did it with the heart that he was going to get something back? Absolutely not. The dude was just robbed and beaten. He wasn't getting anything in return. But he did even more than what even normal, what we consider good people would do. He put him, he walked up, put him on his donkey, brought him to an inn, and he paid the two denarii and said, hey, whatever expense he accumulates, let me know and I'll reimburse you and I'll be back. That took time. He stayed the night with him because he says that the next day he took care of him. That took work. That took his time, his effort, his money. He had to be attentive to this guy's needs. We don't, if he was in bad shape, he had to make sure he wasn't going to die. And he took care of him. You see, doing that, being a good Samaritan, and Jesus says, hey, go do likewise. That, that's, that's for all of you. That's for all of us. Go do likewise. Not expecting something in return, not expecting to reap a reward for what you do, but go do likewise. Go bring someone to church, bring someone to study the Bible, go do that likewise. Why? Because you're helping them get to everlasting life. And here's the thing it's going to take work, it's going to take effort, it's going to take time. It's going to take patience. It's going to take you outpouring and probably not getting anything back. Well, who cares? You don't get back from people. You get back from God. God fills you up, not men. You know, it it takes a very out-focused, outwardly focused heart, outwardly focused thoughts. It takes effort. You know what the reward is, though? Is that one day, you will go to heaven. That's the reward. And then what's awesome about that is that you can help many people go to heaven. I don't know about you, but I want my family to go to heaven. I want my kids to go to heaven. I want every single person that I come in contact with to go to heaven. Why would I? I don't want no one to go to uh, to the other place, right? I don't want no one to go to everlasting contempt. I want them to go to heaven especially my family, especially those who I love. How does that happen? It's your relationship with God. You know, do you think that if you're the one who becomes a disciple who loves God, that one day your family or your friends or the people you come in contact with one day will just all of a sudden wake up and say, ah, yeah, I want to do it. Now, that could happen. But are you willing to roll those dice? Or do you think that it's better for you to help them get there? Now, you can roll the dice and say, hey, we'll see what happens. But you have the choice to help people make it. Why? Because you made it. In 1 Timothy 4, 16, it says, watch your life and doctrine closely. You will hear me, you will hear me quote this scripture all the time. Because your life and your doctrine are super important. How you live is important. How you, what you live by is important. And it says you got to persevere in them. Why? Because things are going to try to pull you away from a life with Jesus. People, things are going to try to pull you away not to be a good person. You got to persevere when those things happen. And then it says you will save both yourself and your hearers. You see, sometimes we skip that persevere part. We watch our life in doctrine, but when things get hard, we're like, okay, whatever. I guess I won't go do this for Jesus today. I guess I won't do it. I guess I'll wait. I'll wait a week. I'll wait next month. You know, Joe would preach an awesome lesson a couple weeks ago. And 
it was totally true. We make plans for tomorrow. And, and James, it says you make plans to go do this, go to that city. And you're like, hey, you don't have tomorrow. It's very biblical. You don't have tomorrow. None of us knows what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know if today is our last day. We don't know what's going to happen. I know sometimes when we're young and, you know, we feel invincible, right? Like, I mean, when I was, uh, before I had my heart problem back in September, that was when I realized that, you know, oh, snap, like I could die right now. <laughs> and I, not to laugh because it was, I was crying, actually. I was weeping. <laughs> I wasn't very laughing in that moment. Uh, the doctor came in and told me that I, he believed that I had a heart attack at 28 years old. I'm like, I'm 28. <laughs> What do you mean I had a heart attack? I'm like, hold on. Not today. And I remember I sat there and I wept and I cried. This was a couple months ago, back in September. And I, I cried because I just had a daughter that was born in uh, July. I have two, I have three kids total. And I sat there and I, and I thought to myself, did I do enough? What was my purpose in life? If I died right now, what, what was my purpose? What was the purpose God used me for? If I were to die right now, and I was scared. I was scared to, not that I was going to, you know, go to hell or anything like that. Like I was very confident that I, you know, I'd go to heaven, but I was like, what did I do on earth? I could have done so much more. And that's what I think about my kids. What about my kids? I don't want them to grow up without me. I want, I want to be able to leave an impact for their lives. I, I, it was the first time that I thought like that because I'm 20, I was 28. I don't think I'm invincible, right? Like when we're young, we're like, we can never die, right? Until someone dies around us, that's our age. Until we're faced with that, that death when we're looking at it. That's scary. I, I, I didn't sleep for like two weeks because I was afraid I was going to die in my sleep because of this heart problem that I now have. And it was very scary the first two weeks. I was up, there's nice, I didn't sleep at all. So I was like, man, if I'm awake, maybe I won't die. And it was very scary. But see, we don't think like that when we're young. We don't think about how life can just go away. We have to understand that tomorrow is not promised, but you can live for Jesus today. You can shine like a star today. It just takes a decision to say, you know what, man, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to shine like a star. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. We'll close out here. Uh, point number two, of course, uh, is hope in the Lord. Uh, for what you guys can write down for time's sake, a scripture you can go back to and read that gives me the title of the point is Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. It says, even youths grow tired and weary. Even youths, even young people, we grow tired and weary. But those who, and young men stumble and fall, young men and women stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. It's a great scripture. I encourage you to read it. But understand that there will be times where you will fall. The answer is to hope in the Lord. Jeremiah 17. Uh, Gerald read this uh, for the welcome. Uh, Jeremiah 17 verse 5. It says, this is what the Lord says. Curse is the one who trusts in man who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will not will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the, planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries. In a year of drought, and never fails to bear fruit. Here, here's what's powerful about this scripture. It says, when, it does not fear when the heat comes. It has no worries in a year of drought. You know what that means? The heat will come. The drought will happen but you won't worry about it because you will still bear fruit in the drought. When you trust in God, you will not fear when the heat comes, when those trials, when those challenges come in your life, because you, your leaves will still be green. 
when everything else withers around you, you are planted by this stream that is rooted into God, and therefore you will still be healthy. You will still be getting life. You, it won't wor- you won't be worried or be in fear when those trials or challenges come into your life. You will be close to God. Because when you hope in the Lord, you renew your strength. When you hope in the Lord, you soar on wings like eagles. You won't worry about any of that stuff. You just got to ask yourself, if you're worried, you're, are you hoping in the Lord? You see, if you're hoping in the Lord and everything, you won't be worried. And so if you're worried, you're not hoping in God. If you're living in fear, you're not trusting in God. You see, there's no fear when it comes when you're with God. God wipes that out. But you see, the thing is, it's not about trying to get rid of the fear. It's about drawing close to God and the fear will go away and the worry will go away. Matthew 6, when it talks about worry from Matthew 6, 25, all the way to 33. And the last thing it says is, don't worry about what you eat. Don't worry about what you're aware, what you, all this stuff. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. That's a hard concept for Americans. It's a very hard concept for Americans. Because we live in a country where it's go get it. Get what you want. Don't wait for no one to get it for you. That's wrong when it comes to God. It's trusting God first, and then you'll get what you need. God will take care of you. We got to rewire that mindset here in America. We got to change that. You know, I want to challenge you all that. No matter where you're at in your life with God, if you're still trying to find and learn and get a better relationship with him, trust in him. Just take the plunge. Have faith that God is going to take care of you. That's it. Everlasting life, everlasting contempt. It's a simple decision. It's a commitment, though. So you got to be willing to count the cost and understand what you're committing to. Amen. You know, but for those, whether you're a young Christian, whether you've been around for 10 years, five years, three years, 15 years, whatever, it's the answer is simply this. Always trust in God. That's how you drive out everything. If you're close to God, how can there be sin in your life? If God is at the forefront of your mind in everything you do, how can there be sin? How can there be contempt when you're close to God? You see, even for myself, sometimes we dip. Sometimes we waver. Sometimes that roller coaster is looping a bunch. We have to always be on that incline. He said, incline is smooth. It's when we dip that it gets a little scary. You see, we have to stay close to God no matter what. And let's lead many, many people to righteousness. I believe that we can double Connecticut. I believe that we can do something spectacular. I believe that we can have all these people join us and lead many people to righteousness, but it's going to take all of us. It's going to take a full commitment. Let's shine like stars in God's eyes. Why? Because we are living a bigger purpose. Anything that you could think of, this is a bigger purpose. God has a bigger purpose for your life. You got to believe it. And I believe that he does. Thank you so much. awesome bro well amen jonathan thank you so much for that amazing sermon uh that was fantastic i learned a lot from there we're gonna close it out with one final song we're gonna be singing i'll fly away song number 422 some glad morning when this life is over i'll fly away fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away, fly away. When the shadows of this life have grown, I'll fly away, fly away, like 
a bird from prison bars have flown out. Fly away, fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, fly away, just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away, fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, fly away. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you all for coming. You guys are awesome. We love you. Have a good day.